So Miss Lampkin hears all this. She agrees to the plan, but the next day, only Diana showed up to this meeting. There was no sign of Madalena. They asked Diana, what's going on? Where's Madalena? And that's when Diana opened up and told them that the truth was she hadn't seen her daughter since November 23rd at around noon. Hey guys, welcome back to What Happened with Jackie Flores. I'm Jackie, and I hope you're all doing super, super well. We are on episode 16 of the podcast, which is crazy. I feel like we just started this podcast, but somehow we're already into 16 episodes. I love it, and I just really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to today's case. Today, we're gonna be talking about a case that is just so upsetting and just very confusing because there's so many unanswered questions. We're gonna be talking about what happened to Madalena Kojakari. Now, one of the biggest questions people have in this case is why didn't anyone report Madalena is missing for weeks. Yeah, it's really wild. You know, there's just a lot of information to go through. So let's jump right in and let's talk about what happened to Madalena Kojakari. Madalena Kojakari was born on April 11th, 2011 in Moldova to her mother, Diane Kojakari. Now there really isn't much information about her birth father, even to date after everything has happened and you know, this case went public, there really isn't any information about who her bio dad is. And there's also very little information about Diana, about Madalena, about pretty much everyone in this case. Now what we do know about Diana was reported by a Romanian journalist. And she said that Diana's family is full of successful musicians but that at the time that she gave birth to Madalena, she was working as an English translator and she was fully supporting herself and Madalena. She later met a man online named Christopher Palmeter, who was actually 23 years older than her, and they began a relationship. Now, this relationship was an online slash long distance relationship because Christopher was originally from Michigan, but he was living in Cornelius, North Carolina as a successful designer at an engineering firm. So he was living in North Carolina and Diana was living all the way in Moldova. So they started dating before ever even meeting each other in person. Eventually, Christopher went to Moldova to meet Diana for the first time, and when he got there, he proposed, and the two of them got engaged, which seems very out there and fast. You know, it's kind of a little bit crazy, but that's what the two wanted. They loved each other, and they wanted to get married. After this, Diana and her three-year-old daughter, Madalena, left Moldova, and they moved to Cornelius, North Carolina, to live with Christopher and, you know, start this new chapter of their lives. The three of them lived in a very nice and safe neighborhood, in a really beautiful two-car garage house. It was kind of like a picture-perfect family. You know, a picture-perfect life. The family would order food from a local restaurant three times a week. And, you know, all the servers there said that they seemed like such a normal and happy family, which is a lot. Like, going out to eat three times a week to a restaurant is a lot. Like, you can tell that this meant that they were pretty well off. Christopher did work, like I said, at an engineering firm, but at this time, Diana did not work. So he was fully supporting the family on his own and, you know, was able to have afford this nice house in this nice neighborhood to go out to these dinners so you know everything seemed to be going well but in March of 2020 Christopher was actually let go from his engineering job we're not really sure why this happened but you know we can assume that this was because of the pandemic this is when everything started and a lot of people were let go from their jobs now this was really hard for the family to deal with because they were used to this lifestyle that they were living like i said they lived in a nice neighborhood they went out to these dinners every week so to know that christopher the main breadwinner of the family you know the one that pretty much paid for everything lost his job it was scary for them but you know christopher actually used this time to start his own business which was making engraved resin plaques to be used as displays and it seemed like the business was doing well because the family didn't appear to be financially struggling or anything like that. During this time, Madalena was in the sixth grade at Bailey Middle School and she was such a cute little girl. She loved horses and she was actually a horseback rider. She was a bit shy, so she only had a few friends at school, but she was very polite, kind, and just an excellent student. Her teachers came out and they spoke about her and they said that she was a little bit guarded. You know, she would often wear her jacket inside the classroom and they figured that she did this as a comfort thing. You know, the jacket made her feel safe and it made her feel protected. Now, as for the family as a whole, one of Diana's Facebook friends named Michelle came out and said that the family seemed happy, but that they were also quiet and they kind of kept to themselves. You know, they weren't really social people. They didn't have a lot of friends in the area. And one of the only social things that they would do was attend a family friend's get togethers. That was it. They didn't really do much besides that. 
Now, Michelle said that her son did play with Madalena and that she seemed like a sweet, you know, just regular kid. Now, going back to the family's dynamic, Diana and her husband, Christopher, you know, they did have some different religious beliefs. In fact, one of their most disagreed upon subjects was religion. Diana's beliefs were very strong and specific and Christopher just didn't share them. Some neighbors believe that there was some sun worshiping going on at their home, but we don't know that for sure. Now, Diana was a follower of Kundalini, a subgroup formed by yogi Bajan that claimed to take some influence from the Sikh religion. Now, the followers of this subgroup believed awakening is reachable through years of dedicated yoga practice, as well as an intense and traumatic personal experiences such as childbirth, near-death encounters, and extreme emotional distress. Now, the truth is, Yogi Bajan was a fraudster guilty of sexual misconduct by 299 victims after his death. He had a wife and three daughters, but he claimed to be celibate. HBO is actually working on a documentary about this because this just seems really crazy, so definitely stay tuned for that. Now, Yogi encouraged violence, abuse, and trauma as a way to trigger a Kundalini awakening. Now, the majority of those who practice Kundalini reject Yogi today after all the allegations about him came to light, but not Diana. She still supported it. Now, as for Christopher, he was a Christian and he openly posted about being pro-gun. So they both believed in very different things things and it's reported that Madalena followed Christianity just like her stepfather. And that's pretty much all the information I was able to find about the family. You know, to the outside world, they seem to be a happy and normal household. However, on November 21st, 2022, everything would change. That day, 11-year-old Madalena went to school and she had a normal day. You know, she went to go do what she always did and when class ended, she got on the school bus and she headed home. At around 4.59 p.m., security footage shows Madalena getting off the school bus with some of her classmates at the bus stop. However, this is the last time that Madalena was seen at least on surveillance video. The next day on November 22nd, 2022, Madalena never showed up to school. She actually didn't return all week or the following week or the week after that. So at this point, Madalena has missed weeks of class, which is crazy. And I feel like that should have raised red flags and, you know, raised alarms for everyone at the school. But at the time, no one really did anything about it. It wasn't until three weeks later on December 12th when a school resource officer named Jane Nobles and a guidance counselor named Miss Lampkin got together and they realized that something was wrong. I mean, it had been weeks since anyone had seen Madalena and they were getting worried about this. They actually tried to check in on what was happening at the family's home because they just felt like something wasn't right. Now, North Carolina, like most places, has a law that children under the age of 16 have to be in school by law. Whether it's in public school, private school, homeschooling, anything, they just have to be enrolled and actually attending classes. It's also a rule that the school has to contact the family if their child has three to six unexcused absences, meaning a parent hasn't called in, you know, letting them know that their child is sick or, you know, is going on vacation, anything like that. At 10 days of unexcused absences, a principal is supposed to meet with the parents to determine if they've made a good faith effort to get their child to school. And if the parents have violated the state school laws, the parents can actually face criminal charges for this. So there are laws in place to make sure that kids are going to school and that if they aren't, they're getting checked up on to make sure that everything's okay. So by the time Jane and Miss Lampkin arrived to Madalena's house, she had missed 15 days of school, which is a lot. They get to her house, they knock on the door, but nobody answered. So they ended up just leaving a truancy packet at the door and then they just left. Now, a truancy packet is a set of guidelines and reading material for parents of students who have been skipping school. I mean, I wonder if they could have called the police at this point, you know, filed a report or at least let the principal know about this. The fact that no one has seen or heard from Madalena for 15 days is very concerning. And now no one is answering the door, like answering their phone calls. It's just very suspicious. And I just, I wonder why Jane and Miss Lampkin just didn't call the police at that moment. I mean, they already did a lot by going to the house and, you know, searching for answers, but but I still feel like they could have done more at that moment. Now, two days after this, on December 14th, the school finally heard from Madalena's family. Diana actually called the school's guidance counselor, Miss Lampkin, who went to the house just two days earlier, and Diana asked to set a meeting about all the school that Madalena had been missing. Diana said that she would bring Madalena into the school the next day so that the three of them could, you know, figure out a plan to address these absences and, you know, just figure out what to do next. So Miss Lampkin hears all this, she agrees to the plan, but the next day, only Diana showed up to this meeting. 
there was no sign of Madalena. Now, of course, Miss Lampkin thought that this was odd. So she actually called in Jane, the school's resource officer I mentioned earlier, because this was just all very suspicious. They asked Diana, what's going on? Where's Madalena? And that's when Diana opened up and told them that the truth was she hadn't seen her daughter since November 23rd at around noon. November 23rd. Like what? She's telling them this on December 14th, which is so shocking. I mean, so many days have passed without your daughter and she's just now letting people know that she's missing. Now, November 23rd is just two days after Madalena was last seen on surveillance footage getting off the school bus. That was a Monday. So it's not like she had gotten off the bus before like a weekend started. This happened literally at the start of the week. So after revealing all of this shocking information, Jane tells Diana to tell her husband, Christopher, to come to the school so they can all talk about this you know, figure out what's going on. And then she also calls the police department and tells them to come to the school because this is now a very serious situation. Police eventually arrive at the scene and they begin to question Diana about what happened to her daughter. Now, Diana tells them that she last saw Madalena on November 23rd at 10 p.m., not at noon, which is what she told Jane and Miss Lampkin. So why did she change that hour now? Like, why did she get those times confused? She also added that she saw Madalena go to her room to go to sleep. And she said that she and her husband, Christopher, actually got into an argument that night. Now, we're not really sure what this argument was about. She hasn't really revealed details about this, but they got into an argument. And then the next morning, which was Thanksgiving, Christopher left the house to go to his family's home in Michigan for the holiday. And the main reason that he left wasn't to like be with his family. It was to go get some items items. Now, these items, we don't really know what they are. You know, Diana is saying that this all happened on Thanksgiving. Now, Madalena went missing on Monday. Thanksgiving is on a Thursday. So what happened Tuesday and Wednesday? You know, why didn't Madalena go to class that day? Why didn't Diana call the school to let them know that she was going to be absent? You know, if she was sick or something like what happened in those two days and why doesn't Diana tell the police what was going on? Now, Christopher's family hasn't verified that he was in fact with them in Michigan. And you would think like, if he actually did there to go pick up some stuff, like there would be surveillance footage of him there or like his family would have seen him, but no, no one has confirmed this. Now that same morning at around 11.30 a.m., Diana went to Madalena's room to wake her up. But when she walked inside the bedroom, Madalena wasn't there. She started searching all over the house, but Madalena was nowhere to be found. Now, instead of like panicking and thinking that something was wrong, Diana just assumed that Madalena had gone to Michigan with Christopher and that Christopher just hadn't told her about this and that everything was okay. However, she didn't call her husband to confirm this, which I feel like most people would do. You know, if you woke up one morning and you saw that your daughter was gone, I'm pretty sure you would call your partner and confirm that your child was with them. You wouldn't just assume that and just be like, oh, like they're together, like everything's fine. On top of that, it was Thanksgiving day. So like, did she not think it was weird that her daughter and her you know, husband were having Thanksgiving without her. It's just a little bit weird, but you know, that's just exactly what Diana did. She just didn't call her husband to confirm this, nothing. About two days later on Saturday, November 26, Christopher came back home from his trip to Michigan at about 7 p.m. But when he walked through the door, he was alone. Madalena was not with him. That's when Diana decided to finally ask her husband if he knew where her daughter was, which is crazy. I mean, two days have gone by without any information about her daughter, without knowing her whereabouts, nothing. And now two days later, she's finally trying to figure out, you know, what happened. So she asked Christopher if he knows where Madalena is. And he says, no, do you know where she is? And I know that sounds weird and not like a normal conversation, especially one about your missing child. But that's what Diana said in her statement to investigators. Now, Christopher said pretty much the same thing. Like when he spoke to investigators, he gave the same statement, but he also added that they kind of just like went back and forth with each other with questions. So Diana asked him, do you know where Madalena is? And he said, no. And then he also asked Diana, Diana, are you hiding her? And that Diana replied and said, no, are you hiding her? It's just really weird, like the back and forth like that. I feel like in that moment, you would just immediately call the police. You wouldn't be like going back and forth being like, are you hiding her? Like, why would that be a question that they would ask each other? And yeah, that's pretty much when and how Diana and Christopher discovered that Madalena was missing. However, she told investigators that she didn't want to report her daughter as missing in that moment because she didn't want to cause a quote, conflict between her and her husband, which I'm just like, huh? Like you would rather ignore the fact that your daughter is missing just so you don't fight with your husband that doesn't make sense. Now, Diana also said that Christopher had previously, quote, put her family in danger 
but it doesn't exactly seem like she expanded on what this means. You know, like when did he put her family in danger and why and how and when did this happen? There's just not many details about that, but she did say that. So investigators went to go speak with Christopher and he says that he left for Michigan on the 23rd, not the 24th, to pick up the items. So what are these items? Like no one specifies what these items were, what he went to go pick up or why he went to go pick up these things. He also said that he didn't see Madalena on the 23rd at all. He actually said that he hadn't seen Madalena for an entire week before his trip, which really doesn't make sense because Madalena did go to school two days before the 23rd and she went to school the week before that. Like she was actually seen in class. So wouldn't her stepdad have seen her if he was living in the house? It just seems weird. Like he hadn't seen her for an entire week before she went missing. Like why? Like, why did that happen? He also said that when he returned from Michigan, he asked Diana where Madalena was because he had no idea where she was. It's all just very weird. Like, they both have such conflicting statements, and I just don't get how Christopher didn't see Madalena for a week before she went missing, when she was clearly at home and going to school. So maybe Christopher was staying somewhere else at the time. You know, maybe he wasn't sleeping at the home, and that's why he didn't see her. Or maybe he was living at the home, but, like, Madalena didn't want to be with him and, like, hid from him, and that's why they didn't cross paths together. I mean, it's just all very confusing. Now, Diana admitted that she told her family in Moldova that she didn't know where Madalena was and that they told her to contact the police, but Diana didn't, and neither did her family. Yes, they were in a foreign country, but you can Google local police department phone numbers and call them. You know, if they were concerned about Madalena and about what was going on with her, they also should have called the police. Diana also said that Madalena didn't have a cell phone and that her backpack and some clothes from her bedroom were missing. After learning about all of this, investigators immediately got a search warrant on December 15th and they went to search Madalena's home, which is honestly pretty quick. It seems like they were rushing this because they knew that something bad had happened to Madalena. So they got the search warrant and when they got there, they saw that in the kitchen, part of it was blocked off with plywood. And when they were asked about this, Christopher said that they were doing renovations and that they were building a separate apartment inside the house, which again, is just a little bit weird. So investigators continue searching the house and they end up taking three iPhones as well as 11 other items from the home. However, we're not sure what these other items are. Now, since both Diana and Christopher admitted to knowing that Madalena was missing and they didn't report it right away, they actually broke Kaylee's law. Now, Kaylee's law was created in Kaylee Anthony's honor. I haven't covered her case on my channel before, but there's lots of documentaries about what happened to her if you guys want to learn more about it. But Kaylee's mother, Casey Anthony, didn't report her daughter Kaylee missing for an entire month. Now, this was a really crazy case and the public was so angry about this and they were angry at the fact that this wasn't originally being treated as a serious crime. So because of all this outrage, they actually created a GoFundMe and Kaylee's law was made enforcing that you have to report when a child is missing within 24 hours of their disappearance or one hour of their death. Otherwise, the parent or caretaker would be charged with a felony crime. So because of this, on December 17th, 2022, Madalena's mom, Diana, and her stepdad, Christopher, were arrested because they didn't report Madalena missing within 24 hours. Now, Christopher's bond was set at $200,000 and Diana's was set to $250,000. But there was also a condition that if either of them made their bond, they would have to surrender their passports. However, the judge actually later revoked Diana's bond and both her and Christopher were put in jail. So yeah, they weren't arrested because they were accused of having something to do with Madalena's disappearance or because they endangered her life, nothing like that. They were only arrested because they failed to report her as missing. So after this investigation and search really started, the local police actually called the FBI and asked them to help with the case on December 18th. I mean, they needed help finding the truth, the truth of what happened to Madalena and where she was. Investigators knocked on over 245 doors in the community to see if anyone had seen Madalena or you know if they knew anything about about the case but there was really no viable tips. They also searched in Lake Cornelius in the surrounding forest area as a precautionary measure, but once again, they didn't find anything. The police captain actually addressed the public because there was a lot of outrage about this, and they said, quote, 
This is a serious case of a child whose parents are clearly not telling us everything they know. I mean, investigators and the public truly felt like Madalena's parents were lying and that they actually knew what happened to their daughter. I just don't understand how they let so many days go by without calling the police or doing anything to search for their daughter. On December 21st, investigators got another search warrant for Madalena's home and they removed even more items. But again, the details about what these items were are currently redacted from public reports, but it appears to be around 40 items that they removed. Now, after all of this happened, neighbors came out and they kind of spoke about what they saw go on in the household. Now, they say that they never saw Diana outside of the house by herself and that Christopher was always the one watching Madalena play outside. They also said that he never let Madalena play outside alone with other children and that Christopher was always the one who took Madalena trick-or-treating. Now, neighbors also came forward and they spoke about what they saw happen after Madalena went missing. And, you know, everyone just wanted to know what were Diana and Christopher doing after their daughter went missing. I mean, so many days went by before they called the police. So what were they doing in those days? You know, were they searching for her by themselves? Were they asking neighbors for help? I mean, what was happening? Well, according to the neighbors, they reported that a week after Madalena went missing, they saw smoke and flames coming from the backyard of the house. And they actually had called the fire department about this on one occasion after the fire continued to burn for days. Other neighbors say that they actually saw, quote, members of the family burning couch cushions in their fire pit. Now, I'm not sure what these people meant by members of the family, like, do they mean Diana and Christopher? Do they mean someone else? I'm not really sure. So the fire department did respond to this call, but they are now saying that they can't discuss anything from that event since it's an ongoing investigation. So we don't really know what they found or what really happened. But it's definitely odd. I mean, why are they burning a couch while their daughter is missing? You would think that they would be doing everything to search for her and find her and like get help, but... No, instead of reporting her to the police, they're burning a couch. Now, investigators and the FBI were seen by neighbors during a second search, taking samples for hours from the fire pit area. It was also discovered that Diana had also left town after Madalena went missing. She drove her car to Madison County, North Carolina, which is located right next to the Tennessee border on November 22nd and December 15th. So that would be the day after Madalena was seen getting off the bus and then the day that Diana admitted that Madalena was missing. Now that is about 150 miles and like a two and a half hour drive from where their house was. And the area there is just like mountains and forests. It's not really like a residential area and it's just very isolated. Now, why would Diana be going there while her daughter is missing? It just doesn't make any sense. Like she literally went there the day after her daughter was last seen and then the day she she reported her daughter as missing. Why? Well, on January 6th, the local Cornelius Police Department posted on Facebook saying, quote, We are seeking first-hand eyewitness information from anyone who may have seen this Toyota Prius or white female in the Madison County area between the dates of November 22nd and December 15th, 2022. So they were looking for clues about this, and apparently a Madison County Sheriff's Department deputy came across Diana on U.S. Highway 25 near Lonesome Mountain Road at a pull-off area, but it hasn't been released what this reason was like why they came across each other like we don't know if he pulled diana over because she was violating traffic laws or you know something like that we don't really know the details but he did encounter her now what's also strange about diana's trips is that she took selfies with her phone while she was there and she actually looks happy and normal in them so it just really makes you wonder you know what was she doing there you know was she hiding a body was she getting rid of evidence was she creating an alibi with the photos it's just so weird. Like if your daughter is missing, like would you really take a selfie and look happy? It just doesn't make sense. Now, remember that restaurant that I mentioned before that the family would go to three times a week? Well, after Madalena went missing, Diana and Christopher continued to go out to eat just the two of them. Now, since they were regulars, all the servers knew the entire family and they were asking, you know, where's Madalena? And one server said that they were told that Madalena was either with the babysitter or that she was at a sleepover. They also said that Diana and Christopher were acting completely normal and definitely not distressed, which again, just doesn't make sense to me. If your child is missing, are you really gonna go to a restaurant and just have dinner and just act like nothing is wrong? Also, if they did tell the server that Madalena was with the babysitter or at a sleepover, you know, did police 
police look into that? You know, do they ask the parents who the babysitter was, who the sleepover was with? I mean, there's just so many unanswered questions. Now, it was also discovered that in the days before Madalena's disappearance, Diana had called her nephew, Octavian, literally dozens of times. Now, it was discovered by a Facebook group that this nephew had actually lived with their family in their North Carolina home in 2019. But now, Octavian currently lives with his wife in Florida. So police went to go interview him and he said that Diana had called him to ask him to smuggle Diana and Madalena out of their home because of Diana's issues with Christopher. Apparently she was planning on divorcing him and she needed help getting away from him. Now investigators also went through Octavian's phone records and they discovered that he had made calls to multiple people who are currently being investigated for large scale narcotic smuggling. Now Diana had also made several calls to some of those phone numbers as well. According to reports, people involved in narcotic smuggling can also be associated in human smuggling. So after this, on February 13th, police got another warrant to search Madalena's house and her family's car. Now, one of the dogs picked up the scent of narcotics twice on the driver's door, but no actual narcotics were found. However, what was found was Madalena and Diana's Moldovan and Romanian passports in the center console of the car, as well as Diana's Moldovan credit card and work and education records, which is definitely suspicious. You know, why are all these items and passports ports and cards inside of the car. Now, all of this give investigators hope that maybe Madalena is still alive. You know, maybe Diana did set up something to smuggle Madalena out of the country, which is, you know, sad, but maybe that means that Madalena is still out there and that she's still alive. However, to this day, Diana is still saying that she doesn't know where Madalena is or what happened to her or, you know, anything about her disappearance. Some people also believe that the mark on Diana's temple and forehead in her mugshot might be an injury or like a recent bruise from a domestic violence situation with Christopher. I mean, she did tell people that she was going to divorce him and that things weren't going well, so maybe he was abusive. In an interview with Victor Kojakari, who is Diana's father that still lives in Moldova, he said that Diana and Madalena seemed happy when he spoke to them on the phone, but he also said that they were only allowed to call him when Christopher wasn't home. Apparently, Christopher didn't want them to have any contact with her family in Moldova, which is really odd, and Victor said that when he did call Diana and she was with Christopher, he would always be the one to answer the phone first. Even if the call was on speaker, you know, in the car or something like that, it would always be Christopher that would speak for Diana and for Madalena. Now, Victor's theory about what happened to his granddaughter is that Christopher actually kidnapped Madalena the day that he went to Michigan. Now, just a reminder, Christopher is Madalena's stepdad, not her biological father. Now, on March 17th, 2023, Diana was shockingly found with a small baggie of drugs, specifically cocaine and fentanyl, in her shirt pocket in jail. An FBI member investigating the case believes that negotiating using this new charge will help them get more information from Diana. So basically, the drug charges would be dropped if Diana would just tell them the truth about what happened to her daughter, Madalena. You know, the sentence for having drugs in jail is up to 20 years. So they're hoping that if they give this deal to Diana, she'll open up and just finally reveal what happened to her daughter. So let's talk about the trial. Earlier this year, on January 4th, 2023, a grand jury indicted Christopher and Diana on felony charges for failing to report a missing child. Again, they're not charging them with anything to do with her disappearance, with an abduction, with a death, nothing. Now, a grand jury indictment is a standard part of the process. It's not a conviction and it simply moves the case out of the district court and into a superior court. So basically, it just means that the amount of evidence that is needed to go to trial is present. Now, search warrants associated associated with the case were supposed to become public in April, but have been ordered to remain sealed until July 17th by the judge. Now, according to a legal expert, extending the seal on key warrants is standard practice in many cases. They said, quote, there could still be evidence that they're searching for, the expert said. We have to remember we still have a little girl who's missing, who hasn't been found. What if there's details in those search warrants that would reveal law enforcement's theory of what happened to her and where she may be? The investigation is still active to this day, and then investigators just want to make sure that they don't reveal any details that may jeopardize the investigation. The police believe that both Christopher and Diana know more, but they're just not cooperating. Now, if Diana did smuggle Madalena out of the country and it was like her plan to do this to, you know, get her away from Christopher, why is Christopher also being so silent about this? Like if he truly had nothing to do with this and had no idea that Diana smuggled their daughter out, why isn't he saying more? Like, it's just a little bit weird that they're both silent. 
you know, are they protecting each other or, you know, like what's going on with that? Now, if Madalena's body and any evidence connecting them to the crime are found, they are going to be charged with first degree premeditated murder. As of now, in July of 2023, both Christopher and Diana remain in custody for failing to report Madalena is missing and they're both still not talking. They both claim that they have no idea what happened to their daughter, and it's just really frustrating that they're not speaking out about this because I feel like we all know that they do know something and that they probably do know exactly what happened to her and you know who knows how long they're gonna be silent for. There is so much public outrage about this and the state filed these charges to get the process started, but they're not ready to go to trial on murder charges just yet. And because Christopher and Diana have a right to a speedy trial, police wanna keep searching for the body and you know, any additional evidence, most importantly, a potential murder weapon. Madalena's granddad has written a heartbreaking note begging the authorities to find their beautiful girl. At this present time, there is no information about when further trials in the case are set to happen. However, I will keep you guys posted on any new movements in the case. I just truly hope that Madalena is found safe and alive. At the end of the day, that's what matters, that this little girl is found and that she's okay. I mean, this is just really upsetting. I truly feel like her parents know what happened to her, but but they're just refusing to talk. It's so sad because parents are supposed to protect you and love you, not let you go missing for multiple days before calling and asking for help. Now, this case has received a lot of public attention, and because of that, people have their own theories about what could have happened to Madalena. So let's talk about it. Some people believe that Madalena is back in Moldova in hiding after Diana agreed to a drug smuggle in exchange for getting Madalena out of the country and away from Christopher's alleged abuse. You know, she had communicated to her family about wanting to get away from Christopher before as well. She also had those calls with her nephew. I mean, all of those things together just really make people believe that she did smuggle her daughter out of the country. But also, I wonder, you know, why were their passports still in the car? You know, if she did smuggle her out of there, why was all of that information still there? And, you know, a lot of people wonder, did Christopher find out about this plan? You know, did he find out that Diana was trying to smuggle their daughter out of the country and then he got upset and, you know, killed Madalena and is now telling Diana to sh not say anything and to protect him because he still has this abuse and power over her. I don't know. That's just like one theory that people have. Others have noted that it is possible Madalena never even returned home after getting off the bus. You know, no one has come forward saying that they saw her walk inside the house other than her mom. And I haven't heard about any ring camera footage, which does seem odd in an area like that. You know, they lived in a really nice neighborhood. So how does no one have footage of Madalena actually getting off the bus and walking inside the house? Or if she was murdered in the house, how is there just like no footage of them like moving her body? Just like anything like that. It's just crazy how no one really knows what happened or if she ever made it inside the house after getting off the bus. Now, others speculate if Madalena's disappearance has something to do with the fire that the neighbors saw in Christopher and Diana's backyard. And, you know, they wonder if her body was burned because burning couch cushions doesn't make any sense. Like, why are you doing that? You know, there's just a lot that could have happened. And while many believe that Madalena is most likely deceased by now, some people do have hope that she's alive and that she will be found soon which I hope is the case in this scenario. There's just a lot of confusing information. Like we don't really know when Christopher left to Michigan or if he ever actually made it to Michigan. And also the fact that he says that he didn't see Madalena for an entire week before she actually went missing is so weird. Like how did he not see his stepdaughter? Now, Madalena Kojakari was last seen at home in Cornelius, North Carolina on the evening of November 23rd, 2022. And since then, she has not been seen. She was reported missing to her school on December 15th, 2022, and was last seen wearing jeans, pink, purple, and white Adidas shoes, and a white t-shirt and jacket. If you have any information concerning the whereabouts of Madalena Kojakari, please contact the Cornelius Police Department at 704-892-7773. You can also contact your local FBI office, the nearest American embassy or consulate, or you can submit a tip online at tips.fbi.gov. It's just so important to share her flyer, you know, share this video and just get her story out there. You never know who may come across this video or her flyer and just recognize her and know something about this case. 
The police are actually asking people to continue to post her photo and just spread the word. A few months ago, the Cornelius Police Department released a video of Madalena at a pool in a mermaid costume, having fun and looking happy. Now, the reason the police released this video is because they wanted to remind the public that this is how Madalena should be right now. She should be having fun, being happy, and, you know, here with her friends and family. She should be getting ready for the summer, but instead she's gone. There's also yellow ribbons and missing posters of Madalena all over the town of Cornelius. I mean, everyone just wants her to be found and to be alive. It's a very sad case. You know, this little girl is lost somewhere. You know, a lot of the community members say that they are hopeful that Madalena will be found safe. One resident said, quote, she is young and she has her life to live and she is gone. We don't know what happened and we have no answers. The fact that it's been six months to me is insane. There's also a Facebook page called Where's Madalena Kojakari where they post updates about the case as well as theory. So I will link that page under my YouTube video so you guys can check it out and, you know, stay up to date with the investigation. You know, this one just breaks my heart. I mean, so many days passed without anyone hearing or seeing from Madalena, but no one called the police right away. It's frustrating, and I just feel like her parents know exactly what happened to her. And it's just really sad that they won't come forward and just tell the truth. I truly hope that Madalena is found soon and that she's alive. My thoughts and prayers go out to her and to her family and friends. Like I said, I will keep you guys posted on anything new that happens with the investigation, and hopefully there's good news soon. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I have on this case. Thank you guys so much for being here and for taking the time to listen to what happened to Madalena. If there are any updates, definitely let me know if you guys want a part two on this case because who knows, maybe more information will come out soon and like I said, hopefully it's good news. In the meantime, let me know if there's ever any other cases you want me to cover and please don't forget to follow, rate, and review what happened wherever you get your podcasts and make sure to subscribe to my channel, True Crime Jackie, on YouTube for full video episodes. Also, don't forget to check out episode 15 and you guys can find me on Instagram at the Jackie Flores and on TikTok at True Crime Jackie. Thank you guys again so much for being here and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.